Welcome to Tales from SYO Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. And today I'm going to talk about MGTOW, men going their own way. I'm doing this because last week, after having done a video about how you should never, ever assume that the victim is telling the truth, I got it thinking about MGTOW. And I've, it's another one I've sort of pussyfooted around and doing. And that's because I was never quite sure whether I wanted to go in all-in backing MGTOW. And I've decided, yeah, yeah, I do. And in point of fact, I think I have a couple of things to say, especially near the end of this video, about how you, as someone doing MGTOW, men going their own way, can do to help things get better in the future, which is generally pretty bleak for the next generation or so. In fact, I'm going to argue that MGTOW is, in fact, the only sane option. It is the only sane option for you. What you can say about it is this. Um, I am not, in terms of MGTOW, I am not MGTOW the same way that some men are. I do not suggest pumping and dumping or smashing a dash, which is what some men do. I certainly don't suggest demeaning women. My issue is that socially and legally, women have all the power and men have precisely none. Now, I'm not going to talk about my own divorce because I'm going to give out some things that are, uh, y you know, examples. And I'm not going to talk about my own divorce because that gets too personal and too many people involved that might have problems with it. But I am going to talk about things that I know about in other people's divorces and that are very common in divorce today. So if you recognize some of this stuff, I'm not even remotely surprised. <laughs> Some examples, physical assault. Now, physical assault is usually not something that just happens. Usually it's worked up to by verbal and emotional abuse, which at some point escalates to physical abuse. So in the case of verbal and emotional abuse, a man is required to be stoic about it. It is not socially acceptable to tell people that you are being verbally and emotionally abused by your spouse. Even talking about it with a therapist is not necessarily socially acceptable. Certainly they may be receptive, but it's not socially acceptable. And it's certainly not socially acceptable to talk to about it with your friends. So you're required to just hold it all in. You never, ever let it out. You hold it all in forever. <sighs> if you go to marriage counseling, you're going to be blamed for it, whatever it is, whatever the verbal and emotional abuse is, you will be blamed for it, the man will be blamed for it, and there's nowhere to go with that. If there is an assault, an actual physical assault, because as I say, physical assault is usually preceded by verbal and emotional abuse. A f physical abuse is usually preceded by that. Well, in one particular instance of which I'm aware, the wife uh, assaulted did a physical abuse assault of a male. And when the arresting officer came, she totally copped out. It was a complete confession. A uh, complete confession told the arresting officer everything that had happened, confessed to everything, and just assumed that it was no big deal, um, that, you know, it was what, it was just me hitting on, you know, smashing on a guy. Uh, I'm not going to get in any trouble about it absolutely was a confession. And this was after having been <laughs> read her Miranda rights, which, by the way, if you're not familiar, they're no longer required to read you your rights. Your rights are, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney and to have one present during questioning. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be provided to you free of charge. And then they will ask you, do you understand these rights as I have explained them to you? And you say, yes. And then they will usually ask the question, do you wish to give up your right to remain silent? And the answer is no. And then you shut your trap and you do not open it again until you have an attorney sitting next to you making sure that you don't accidentally incriminate yourself. Remember, everything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Shut up. That's not the case in this particular instance, in this particular instance, and in many instances of women who have abused their husbands. Uh, they just simply tell the arresting officer everything. They give them a complete confession. And in this particular instance, the man in question, uh, they were living in the marital home together at that point. Unsurprisingly, he took out a protective order against her. He was forced to move out of the marital home. 
They were living in the marital home. She assaulted him. She confessed to it to the arresting officer, and he was forced to move out. I would invite you to imagine what would happen if the reverse were true. If a man assaulted a woman, copped out to the arresting officer, the man would not be let in that house again. It would not be the woman that would have to move out. And in point of fact, in this particular case, the lawyer actually told the man in question, women assault men all the time during divorce. If we actually prosecuted it for them, with them, then our jails would be filled with nothing but women who had assaulted men during divorce. I want you to let that sink in for a second because the double standard there is astonishing. If men routinely assaulted women during divorce, you can be absolutely certain that they would be prosecuted and put in jail where they belong. Women, on the other hand, are not. Then there are false accusa accusations, a number of different types of false accusations that women consistently make during divorce. For example, child abuse. A woman can say that uh, is always believed. Uh, she, the law always assumes that she is telling the truth and no evidence is required. No evidence whatsoever is required to prove the abuse. And I can give you an example of one of these, again, from someone I know. Um, this individual had their kids over for their uh, scheduled visitation, made them dinner. One of the kids didn't like what was made for them for dinner, and the man said, well, that's fine. You can either eat what's on the table or you can make something else. And the child called the, um, the mother, and the mother got upset by it, and the mother decided to call the police and report the man for child abuse. That's, that's common. That's pretty normal. That is, frankly, the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, women, uh, they're always assumed to be right. It's the tip of the iceberg. Women make false accusations of beatings for of children. Men can and do go to prison over it, and they never see their children unsupervised again. Sometimes they never see their children at all. And then there's sexual or physical abuse against the woman. Again, in these cases, the woman is always believed. The law assumes she is telling the truth. No evidence is required. Men are prosecuted and sent to prison. And remember that a woman can give a complete confession and will not be prosecuted under the same circumstances. If a woman physically or even sexually assaults a man, it doesn't matter. She can give a complete confession and she will not be prosecuted for it. Then there's the issue of child custody. Child custody always goes to the woman, period. The only exception is if she actually beats the children and has some other kind of form of abuse that you have physical evidence for. She can otherwise say to the law that she abuses them, but it doesn't matter. If you, unless you have actual physical evidence that she is beating her children, she's going to get them. The only other possibilities are if she has a serious mental disorder, and I mean really, really serious, uh, or if she's a hooker. Usually they won't let her go if she's you know, a crack hoe, but that's about all. She can be absent all the time and have no intention of actually raising the children. Doesn't matter. As long as she's not crazy or a crack hoe, she's going to get the kids. How fair is that? And how good is it for the children to be automatically given to a person that may not be the best parent? Then there's the issue of child support, which is always awarded well above what's necessary to raise a child. Typically, child uh, support is there primarily so that the woman can maintain the same standard of living that she had when she was married. It represents an enormous amount of the man's earnings. He usually will live in abject poverty because of it. Now, for example, I know of a guy who had uh, fallen behind in his child support because he was laid off. His car was repossessed. In order to meet the obligation, he had to liquidate his entire retirement savings to pay off tens of thousands of dollars in child support that accrued over, over only a few months, not years, months. He was prosecuted for this and had to plead guilty, but got a plea agreement and was not sent to prison on the uh, sole 
uh, uh, his uh, word that he would never be late again. And if he was, he would go to the state prison, whereby the, while he's sitting in prison, the amount continues to rack up and continues to rack up and continues to rack up. And oh, by the way, you have to pay room and board for prison in many places. So when you get out, you're just that much worse in debt and more likely going back into jail. In terms of the child support, the woman can spend the money any way she likes and usually spends it to maintain her standard of living. She does not spend it on the children. And here's the important thing, and you're going to see as a recurring theme throughout of all of this, no accountability is required. Women can and do frequently take the children away from their father. This happens constantly. So, for example, suppose you make a deal for a visitation based on the notion that all parties are going to remain in the same general geographic area. And what unfortunately happens very frequently, and I now say don't, don't, don't do this, do not, men, do not offer up additional assets in exchange for additional access to the children. It may wor look like that's going to work from the outset, but I guarantee you that it won't, precisely because of this. You pay for this additional access, and then the woman will take the children and move, say, 500 miles away. Now, in one particular instance I'm aware of, a man could not follow for economic reasons. He was already in poverty due to the divorce. So his contact with his children is essentially cut off, essentially just cut. And then for this particular instance, the man used to drive about 500 miles at least monthly on his own time and on his own dime in order to see, do things like uh, children's school events and so forth. And ultimately was simply forced to renegotiate the child support so that it made more sense for having them two or three months out of the year. And again, no consequences, no accountability. The fact that the woman did this thing where she negotiated on one level for what was supposed to happen and then did something totally different and they had to renegotiate in her favor was meaningless. No consequences. No consequences at all. Then they're sabotaging the relationship with the children. That's almost guaranteed. Women will tell lies of any kind about any man. The sole goal is to destroy a man's relationship with his children. And once again... No consequences to the woman. They will often sabotage men's uh, work and or personal lives. They will circulate rumors about men, usually very salacious in nature, such that other people will be encouraged to circulate them. Now, if you know anything about a rumor, you, can play, you may have played this little game at school. You get everybody in a big circle. You say to one person, I want you to tell this person this rumor. Don't tell anything else. Just say that. And they tell the next person and the next person and the next person and the next person. And finally, when it gets back around to the original person, you discover that the rumor being told has little or nothing to do with the actual first rumor. Women do this all the time. And in so doing, these lies or rumors get progressively worse. They can cause men to be ostracized or sun shunned socially. They can cause him to lose his job or be unable to find another one. They will also cir circulate similar lies and rumors among a man's family, which can destroy relationships that have existed for decades. Women can also refuse the man visitation, even when it is court-ordered, and they will never be prosecuted. Men who do the same thing, however, are completely prosecuted. And unfortunately, as I said, the biggest problem is with this, it is supported entirely by family law. What you're seeing behind me here and my static green screen today is a law library. This is what men are up against. All of what I just talked about is encoded in the books that you see behind me. It is totally supported by law and men, I must tell you, as things currently stand, it will never change. The reason for this is any candidate who advocated for equality would be attacked by feminists, feminists and at least one half of the electorate would not vote for them and they would lose. No sitting male legislator dare suggest it for the exact same reasons. Only a woman can suggest it, but even then they won't because they enjoy. Get this straight, get it through your head. Women enjoy this power that they have over men. They enjoy it. 
and female legislators enjoy it just as well as the citizenry. And in any case, no sane female legislator would possibly bring it up, even if they didn't enjoy it, which they do, because they would never get the support of their female voters who do enjoy the power that they have over men. They will not have the support of those women. They will be jumped on by feminists, and they'll vote it out by the next election. This is also supported by our culture. The man is always shamed for all of these things. There is no sympathy toward men. There never has been. There never will be. And there never has been in any culture ever seen in the history of the entire world. I take a line here from a guy named Paul Elam, who's even bigger MGTOW than I am. And what Paul said, and I thought was brilliant, Paul said, the only thing that people feel for broken men is contempt. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment because it's true. He gave an example that really changed my outlook on things. He said, if you see a man and his dog living under a bridge, you feel sorry for the dog. And that is a true statement. It is sadly a true statement. It was one for me. It was a that was, for me, a step back and, whoa, hang on a minute. Because, in fact, that's how I had previously viewed men and a dog living under a bridge. You feel sorry for the dog. And that made me stop and rethink everything about all the men that I have seen living homeless. Do some of them have issues, such as psycho psychological issues, that preclude them getting the help they need? Yes. Yes, there is that. But a lot of them are just broken men because of what's happened to them in life. Things like divorce. And they had nowhere else to go. Remember, the only thing that people feel for broken men is contempt. That is true. This is simply a fact of culture. Men must simply deal with it because it will never, ever change. Then there's the issue of female responsibility. Females, women, face absolutely no consequences for their actions. In fact, oftentimes the man will be blamed. And again, he will get sympathy from no one. Men often feel like they might as well be dead. And some of them do, in fact, suicide over things like this. Those who don't, well, they're often broken emotionally, sometimes physically. And remember, the only thing that people feel for broken men is contempt. This will not change. Now, do all women do this? Because this is the question you always get. Oh, I don't do that. Do all women do this? No, absolutely not. Of course they don't. But the problem is, you can't tell which of them will do it and which of them won't until you go through the divorce. I mean, you may think that you've married one of the good ones. Believe me, all of the men that I have just described who have experiences like those believed that they found one of the good ones. But then they found out differently during the divorce. Not all women do these things, but all women have the potential to do so because under law and sociology, they can. So ladies who don't deserve to be lumped in with these things, I'm sorry. I really am sorry, but you have to suffer the consequences as well, because no man can tell the good from the bad. It is impossible. Your assurances are not enough. The women who've done these things made the exact same assurances, but when the divorce came, they used the legal system to destroy the man. Your assurances simply aren't enough. This is why I say that MGTOW is the only sane option. Under all these circumstances, why, why would any man get involved with a woman in any way? Certainly not in a legally binding way like marriage. It puts them at significant risk of having their lives and fortunes completely destroyed and at risk of psychological issues so great that they may suicide, because many men do. Being involved with women now is stupid. So, what should men do? This is never going to change legally. We must get that through your head. It's never going to change legally. It is never going to change sociologically. The only thing that people feel for broken men is, a divorce, is contempt. So what should men do? I think there's a way that this can change. 
but it's going to require a fair amount of sacrifice on men's part. From this day going forward, any man who is not or has maybe been uh, uh, married, you should avoid contact with women unless absolutely necessary. This means no relationships with women, no friendships with women. You be civil and businesslike with women at work, but that's all. Only civil and businesslike. Do not respond to any woman's advances. Don't be uncivil about it. Simply make clear that you're not interested. Finally, and this is the hard one, you must become celibate. And I don't mean an incel, people who believe they're involuntarily celibate. I mean become celibate. This is one that's going to be really hard for men because men really do want a wife, a home, children, etc. But the reality is today, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get it. It doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to get it. So what you need to do is become celibate. And that's because having any kind of a relationship with a woman, even if it's just sex, is to risk having a relationship with them. And that is one thing you can never risk. So what should men do? Well, they should treat women as, they should not treat women rather. Should, this is what men should not do. They should not treat the women as sex objects. They aren't. They're simply something to be avoided at all costs. Do not denigrate them. Be polite. They are simply something to be avoided at all costs. You know, when you watch videos, and there are a lot of them out there, uh, MGTOW videos where men treat women as sex objects or denigrate them, don't watch these videos. These are just revenge videos. You don't want or need revenge. You simply don't want to become involved with women. Not out of revenge, but because to do so places you at risk of poverty, jail, and suicide. Simply don't associate with them, not even for sex. Become celibate. Now, the reason I'm asking you to do this, there's, there's, I'm not saying you should be celibate just for your own protection. I'm also saying you should be celibate because guys younger than me, I'm afraid you need to take one for the team. All of this will be particularly difficult for you, particularly celibacy. Men will suffer a great deal because of this. However, the thing about it is women will suffer, suffer more. A man can live, ladies get this through your heads because it's important, a man can live his entire life content without a woman in his life. Ladies, I know from talking to many of you, you can't. You often hear women lament that she, quote, may not find, may never find someone or may be living with nothing but her cats for the rest of her life. This is a concern for women. It really is. And it's not a concern for men. We don't care. We don't care at all. We can be without women for the rest of our lives and not care. You know, what needs to happen is what really worries women is dying childless and alone. This is a woman. This is a woman's worry. It is not a man's worry. It's a woman's worry. If things are ever to get better, at least sociologically, the current generation of men are going to have to take one for the team. You're going to have to do so by avoiding all contact with women because it produces a generation, a generation of women who will die childless and alone. And the next generation, which, by the way, will be a smaller generation because you refused to go along with this crap, that generation will learn from the mistakes of their elders. And that generation will maybe see that the laws are changed. And in any case, women may very well clean up their act. We must allow one entire generation of women to die alone and childless. If you do this, I think feminism will become less man-hating and less strident, focusing more on civil rights like it should be, rather than painting all men as evil and responsible for all of society's ills. Men whom I'm asking to do this, who I'm saying you need to take one for the team, I'm sorry to have to ask you. I really am. But unfortunately, 
taking one for the team is the only way that this is ever going to change. Don't have a relationship with a woman. Do not have sex with them. Take one for the team so that the, those who come after you will have better women to choose from. And I guess that's all I have to say about that today. So thanks for watching. And if you like what I'm doing, please like, sub, hit the notification bell, tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, and pets to do the same. And I'd love, if you want to support me, you can do so via my subscribe star, PayPal tip jar, my Amazon wish list, all of which there are links to below. And there are other ways that in my description that you can find out ways to support me if you want to. I do thank you for watching Tales from SYL Ranch and for supporting me. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.